hello, this is Mr. Field and this is my video on isotopes. Now, before we go any further, make sure you are really comfortable with the basics of chemistry and the atomic structure videos which you'll find earlier uh, in this playlist. So, in this video what we're going to cover is what isotopes are. We'll look at the properties of isotopes and then we'll work through some examples of how to calculate relative atomic mass. So before we learn about isotopes, let's quickly recap the structure of atoms. So the model of atomic structure that you know is called the Bohr model. And this contains a central nucleus, that is this section here, containing positive protons and neutral neutrons. And the atom also contains negative electrons that are orbiting the nucleus in shells. That's what we've got here and here. So how do we determine how many protons and neutrons and electrons there are? We need to look at the periodic table. And so if we look at each cell on the periodic table, for example, sodium, there are two numbers. There's a number at the bottom, a smaller number, which is the atomic number. And that tells us the number of protons. It also tells us the number of electrons. So in this case, sodium has got 11 protons because the atomic number is 11 and also 11 electrons for the same reason. Now, the top number, the bigger number, is called the mass number. And that is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And so to find out the number of neutrons, we do a little calculation. We take the mass number and we subtract the atomic number from it. So in this case, 23, take away 11, and that leaves us with 12 neutrons. OK, so what are isotopes? Isotopes are versions of an element with the same atomic number but a different atomic mass. Another way of putting that is to say that they are versions of element with the same number of protons, but with a different number of neutrons. Um, for example, if we look at hydrogen, hydrogen's got three isotopes. There's hydrogen, th hydrogen one, hydrogen two, and hydrogen three. Now, these numbers here, when we name them, this is just the mass of each one. So hydrogen one's got a mass of one, hydrogen two's got a mass of two, um, hydrogen three's got a mass of three, and so on. And we can also write them in a different way. We can put the mass, if we do the symbol, we write out the symbol and we put the mass superscript before it. So one for hydrogen one, two for hydrogen two, and three for hydrogen three. Now, if we look at their diagrams, we they've all got one electron, they've all got one proton, and that's because they've all got the same atomic number. But what's different is the number of neutrons. There is zero neutrons for hydrogen one, one neutron in hydrogen two, the pink one, and two neutrons in hydrogen three. OK, so let's look at the example of carbon. Now, there are three isotopes of carbon, uh, carbon 12, carbon 13 and carbon 14. Now, they all have the same atomic number, which is six, because they are all carbon and only carbon has an atomic number of six. This means they've all got six protons. They've also all got six electrons. But to find their neutrons, remember, we're going to subtract the atomic number away from the uh, mass number. And that leaves us with six neutrons for carbon-12, seven for carbon-13, and eight for carbon-14. And if we look at their diagrams, you can see that they've all got the same number of positive protons. That's six protons in each one. But you can see that the pink neutrons is going up one each time. So we start with six, then we get seven and eight in carbon-14. So why does this matter? Well, in terms of the chemical properties, all the isotopes of an element have the same chemical properties. What that means is they do the same chemical reactions. And the reason why is because the number of electrons they've got is the same. Uh, and chemistry is really just about the movement of electrons. However, they do have slightly different physical properties. For example, um, the higher isotopes of an element are more dense because they've got more um, protons, or so they've got more neutrons rather in their nucleus, which just makes them that little bit more dense. The other thing, and this is really a point more for physics, so you'll spend a lot of time talking about this in physics, is that some isotopes of an element can be unstable. That means that over time they will change into other atoms um, and release radiation when they do that. And you can see that happening in this little GIF here, right? So we can see uranium is starting out as it is and it's spitting out that particle. Um, and it's turning into thorium. And so that is an example of an unstable nucleus decaying. Now, some isotopes of uranium will do that. Others won't. It depends on the isotope. 
Now, the existence of isotopes leads to the existence of a concept called relative atomic mass. Now, this is the weighted mean of the masses of the isotopes of an element. To understand what that means, it's best to work through an example. So let's look at chlorine. Now, chlorine uh, exists as two isotopes, two main ones, chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Now, you might think the mean of those two masses would be 35 plus 37 divided by 2 to give you 36. Um, that's kind of true, but the problem with that calculation is it doesn't take account of the fact that naturally we have different amounts of each isotope. So 75% of chlorine atoms are chlorine 35, the green ones in this diagram up here, whilst only 25% of them are chlorine 37. So what we have to do is we have to weight our mean by the abundance, by the percentage amount of each one, so that the more common isotopes make a bigger contribution to the relative atomic mass than the less common ones. And that leads to a calculation that looks like this, which we'll work through a couple of examples over the next two slides. And it also means that um, on our periodic table, some of our um, elements, like chlorine, end up with mass numbers, or uh, relative atomic masses rather, that are not integers, they're decimals. Um, and in fact, if you look at more accurate periodic tables, like you might get for A level or IB, you'll find that is the case for most elements. OK, so let's work through an example of how to calculate the relative atomic mass for chlorine. Now, we've got this data. We know that 75% of the chlorines have a mass of 35 and 25% of them has a mass of 37. Now, we can work out the relative atomic mass in two ways. The first method is going to involve using the percentages themselves. So I'm going to say the AR of chlorine is going to equal 35. That's the mass of the first isotope multiplied by 75 that is the abundance of the first isotope plus 37 that is the mass of the second isotope times by 25 that's the abundance of the second isotope and i'm going to divide all of that by the two abundances added together so 75 plus 25 and if i do that stick it all in the calculator um, make sure you pay attention to bib mass I'll get 35.5. So that's one way. Alternatively, if you're confident with your percentages and decimals, you can just convert your um, percentages straight to decimals and do it this way instead. So we'll say the relative atomic mass for chlorine equals 35. That's the mass of our first isotope multiplied by 0.75 because that is 75% as a decimal. And then we're going to add 37 that's the mass for our second isotope, multiplied by 0.25, because that is 25% as a decimal. And if we do that, um, we come to 35.5 as well. This just means we don't have to do the divide by, we don't have to do that division step there, because we've already done it by converting our decimals. So that also gets you to the same answer as well. And finally, one last example is magnesium. Now this time there are three isotopes, um, but the maths works the same. So um, let's work with percentages first of all. So I'm going to go relative atomic mass in brackets of magnesium equals. Now, our first isotope is 24, and that is 79%. So 24 times 79. Then our second isotope has a mass of 25. So do 25 multiplied by its abundance, which is 10%. And then add that to the second, uh, the, the third isotope, which has a mass of 26 multiplied by its abundance which is 11 divide that by all of the abundances added together so 79 add 10 add 11 um, and if we do that we get 24.32 as our final answer alternatively i could do it just working straight with decimals so by converting my percentages into decimals so write out ar of mg equals 24 that's the mass of the first isotope multiplied by 0.79, that is 79% as a decimal. Add that to 25, the mass of my second isotope, multiplied by 0.10, because that's 10% as a decimal. And finally, add on um, 26, that's the mass of my third isotope, multiplied by 0.11, because that's 11% as a decimal. And if I do that, I come out to the same answer again, 24.32. That's it. That end. Well done if you got this far and thank you for watching.